Hello folks, this is David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com and today I'm going to bring you more over the board adventures of the uh, pub chess bluffer. This time uh, two games I played as the pub chess bluffer um, as black against my regular opponent uh, in which I attempted to defend with the French defense against e4. Now in the first game uh, I lost, I played uh, bad moves in the opening um, which led to a lengthy game, but uh, ultimate defeat with a, a last minute blunder as the clock ran down. I won't take you through the whole of that game. I'll just show you what the uh, opening mistake was and then how I prepared against uh, making that mistake and also prepared um, French defense against E4, anticipating that my opponent, the next time he was white, would play a similar kind of opening. Um, so really, the lesson today is uh, partly about the French defence and partly about uh, thinking about mistakes you make in the opening and how uh, to prepare against that in uh, a future game uh, against your opponent, especially where the opponent is white. Um, if you win or if your opponent wins as white against you, it's quite likely that uh, your opponent will try something similar in the next game. Uh, in recent games in, with my regular opponent, um, he has been opening as white with e4. Until recently, he avoided e4. So uh, e4 is his new preferred opening. And um, last month, this is how the game went. So against e4, I respond with the French defence. Now, my depth of, uh, of, of study of the French defence is pretty shallow. Um, outside of the advanced variation and even the advanced variation is not that deep um, so here we are setting ourselves up for the French defense and uh, his next move was uh, knight c3 I moved my knight up expecting the um, pawn to advance however what happened was that my opponent brought out his bishop to uh, g5 and you can see light yes is recommending a counter thrust with your own bishop out to b4 but i did not do that i did not do any of the french defense recommended moves instead i faffed around and attempted to either usher away the bishop with uh, h6 or uh, induce um, the bishop to take the knight in which case I would take back the bishop and hope to uh, build an advantage with the uh, bishop pair. And so my opponent took the knight with his bishop and instead of retaking with the queen, I took with my g pawn, which sets up this uh, rather broken pawn structure and uh, led to various difficulties in the middle game. This is not um, a good setup for the French defence. And so I decided uh, one month later when I was black again to do some preparation uh, in the French defense, anticipating that uh, my opponent would would um, lead with e4 and that we could achieve, I could achieve as black a better setup. And uh, that is in fact what happened. So I'll take you through uh, what I did to prepare for that and how things turned out. So. Um, I was anticipating this opening. This is what I studied for. Um, and I did the first part, the main part of my study was studying what would happen if my opponent did all four moves just the same as last time. And um, by turning for inspiration to my man, John Watson, his play the French, I discovered um, now, I've studied it before, but completely forgotten. But I discovered that um, I was reminded that the um, one advised move is to move out your bishop here to um, bishop to b4, which I have here somewhere, bishop to b4. And this uh, is called the McCutcheon variation. Uh, so there is a counter thrust by the bishop. Um, so both knights are effectively pinned. White pins the black knight to the queen and black counterpins the white knight to the king. And um, here is my, my I spent about an hour and a half studying the McCutcheon defense. Um, 
sat in a sat sat here at home working out various variations of it and uh, these are they um, we have here the uh, e takes d5 variation which i prepared for um, then we have the um, bishop takes f6 uh, variation then we have the uh, bishop to uh, d3 variation and finally the knight to e2 variation and in each case um, light chess is recommended uh, counter move is also what is recommended by John Watson in uh, Play the French. So we'll just take you through them again. So uh, where where uh, D where sorry E takes D D five uh, the Queen takes back um, where the uh, Bishop takes the Knight then the Queen takes back uh, if the Bishop comes to uh, D d3 then uh the d pawn takes the e pawn d takes e4 if we have the advance to advance to e5 attacking our knight here on f6 then um the h pawn counter attacks the bishop and finally if uh, the knight comes out to e2 then once again uh, we have this situation where d takes e4 so i prepared all of those through to uh, a few moves beyond uh, in in this case here i prepared up to the 16th move um, to attempt to get some familiarity and to to be on the lookout for any any moment where my opponent would not play one of these uh, ideal moves however i thought that um at move three after move three here um it would be about 50 50 whether my opponent would repeat the move of his bishop or would in fact advance the central pawn um, so i did a little bit of preparation of that variation which is in fact the classical variation i just took it through i guess i did this for only about 20 minutes i took it through uh, the first nine moves and i finished with um a queenside castle by white which, which is in fact disadvantageous for white uh, just to keep in mind be on the lookout to be on the lookout in case my opponent should do that i would then lead with a queenside attack um, i'll just take you through this uh, variation now uh, move back to move knight to d7 and from there we have um f4 this is how this is how the uh, classic variation typically plays out uh, c5 knight to f3 knight to f6 e3 e7 queen to d2 kingside castle and now this is not the ideal move for white but i put it in here um, to remind myself that if this does occur, it's quite possible it will occur, then we should begin a queenside attack, starting with c4, opening up the line for the bishop here, the queen here, and bringing in our knights on the queen side and our bishop, our rook, and our um, a pawn. So that was the extent of my preparation. Let's see how the actual game played out so indeed my opponent began with e4 i replied with e6 i was very happy to see him play c4 so far so good uh, d5 knight to c3 my opponent ho hovered hovered and thought about what to do here for a while but i was relieved to see that he was playing into my prep and so then i played I played indeed knight to f6 and my opponent played at this point where is it my opponent played he advanced his pawn e5 here and so I brought my knight back to d7 and um, this is where things began to change 
this is the move that my opponent made. Instead of first advancing uh, f4, he moved his knight out. f4 and then knight to f3 are the standard moves of the classical variation, at least in the, um, in the line that uh, John Watson uh, shows us in in uh, the first part, in the main, the series of main moves in in his book, in the chapter on the variation, the classical variation. So I then led with uh, c5. Um, the bishop is brought out. Yes, I did indeed usher away the bishop. Now uh, I think this is the this is um, a loss of tempo here. The bishop has moved twice and not really achieved anything. Um, so the loss of tempo slightly increases the advantage to black. I developed my knight. Uh, what happens next? Castles. Now here is a loss of tempo on my part. Uh, Lightyess is recommending that um, my c pawn takes the d pawn here um, and delay this move by by one, which would have been better. Um, but I. I'm looking to castle. Uh, the loss of tempo is not taken advantage of. Um, Lightyess obviously is recommending that uh, that White now takes advantage of that loss of tempo and takes that pawn. But um, my opponent develops the uh, bishop to e3, and then I now take the pawn. So in fact, th there was no loss of tempo on my part. There was a potential loss of tempo, but it wasn't taken advantage of. Um, and so the situation is much as it would have been. I then take with my knight, the queen takes, and here I castle. We then have bishop to d3, and now I don't play, I don't play b5, I play a move which I'm quite happy with, I'm quite pleased with this move. Um, I was wondering if Lightyess would, would, would do one of its big fluctuations over here, but apparently not. Um, so we've got this bishop pointing at um, the, the, uh, eight, uh, the uh, h-pawn over here. So that shuts it off. If, if uh, white does not count with an en passant take, um, it rather strengthens, I feel, my, my central pawn position. Um, what did white do? White did not take back on passon but and nor did white move his rook to d1 instead white attempted an early initiative which i think is too early and it, it led nowhere here's how it played out um trying to pick apart my central pawn structure white takes um my d pawn with his knight so a knight sacrifice to break up my pawn structure uh, with the idea of getting the queen pointing through on this diagonal. They're, they're, these, the, this is the set of diagonals that I guess my opponent was working on, but my feeling was that it, it, it was insufficient. Um, black, white will get in a check on the king, but I'll simply move my king to h8, and I think that it puts me in a stronger position, certainly from a material point of view, but also I feel from a positional point of view, and we'll see how that plays out. Um, I decide to uh, accept that uh, uh, sacrificial offer. So I take, um, even at the expense of breaking up a central pawn structure, but I feel I'm opening up lines. Keep an eye on my bishops. I have the bishop pair, um, so an open game suits me quite nicely. I take, uh, the queen takes, gets in that check, but it doesn't really go anywhere. I simply move my king into the corner. And now we have um, e6. You can see my advantage is quite big here. Yes, I advanced my knight. I was expecting there'd be a queen exchange, which I think favours me in this position with a material advantage and those open squares for my two bishops. Uh, but here there is a retreat and with my knight uh, protected by my bishop and my knight attacking the pawn, my bishop is attacking the pawn, I simply pick up that central pawn. And that is the end of the Battle of the Bulge. Um, faffing around with the queen. 
I jump in. Now, my aim here is to remove the last bishop and also to further break up uh, or to break up the pawn structure down here. Um, I'm quite happy to exchange off queens if that's the way this exchange goes. But if it goes the other way, then we have an isolated pawn stuck in the middle. So I take, he takes indeed with uh, his C pawns. We now have three pawn islands over here. Uh, attack the queen. The queen moves back. This is as far as my analysis will go because uh, this is the first um, egregious blunder of the game. Um, a simple blunder. I take with my bishop and it's pretty much game over. The game continued for quite a few moves, it has to be said. Um, it wasn't completely game over because uh, I'm vulnerable to blunders myself. But um, at this stage, that's really the main interest of the game. Uh, how I managed to, with a bit of preparation, to get myself into a much better position playing the French defence and achieve a nice, um, a very nice advantage coming into the the uh, middle game, which uh, which simply built up as the game went on. Okay, so that's all from me, uh, David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer.